Tackling the inspection of dark, harsh, and sensitive environments is the specialty of Square Robot, a startup based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Using advanced submersible robotics lowered into a petroleum storage tank, they autonomously inspect these environments for defects in the storage vessel using state-of-the-art sensing technology. By being able to use robotics for this task, they have reduced costs for their customers while improving accuracy. Their design is focused on safety and reliability for these unique environments, providing maximum uptime and allowing inspections to take place when and where humans would have to otherwise wait for the tanks to be empty. Founded in 2016, Square Robot chose SolidWorks and Anovia Works as their go-to design and management solutions. It was critical for them from the start to have the ability to work from anywhere combined with best-in-class design tools. Welcome everyone to our first digital live innovation day for SolarWorks and 3D Experience 2021. Uh, obviously we're doing their format a little different. We're on YouTube live and presenting around Australia. So hopefully you enjoy today. Um, a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Gabriel. I'm the national sales manager here at Catspace. I've actually been in the technical side of things for a long time. And somewhere along the line, I've turned to the dark side. Some would call me Darth Vader, but uh, no, I still love the tech side of things, and I really look forward to these days to be able to share what's new. Now, obviously, the, with the current environment around the world, um, a little bit of concern for Gillette. Uh, a lot of beard brothers going around. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll see a few people with beards, but, you know, I'm sure everyone's keeping safe, and I'm sure we'll all enjoy today. So... What we have here today is the Square Robot, a company based in Boston. It gives us a glimpse of what we can actually see today, how they use SolidWorks, and how they integrated it with 3D Experience to be able to manage quite a complex project. Now, you can see our contact information on the screen. Uh, you get to see our website, our number. So if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the comments as we're going along. We'll try and get to it, uh, but in case we don't, uh, please send us an email, give me a call. Uh, happy to have a conversation with anyone if you have any questions about this. And also, just a reminder, we are recording this event. It will be available as a link on YouTube later on. So if you miss anything, don't worry about it. You can review it a little bit later on. Uh, so. For today, here's a little agenda. We get to hear from Steve Thomas, the Catspace uh, CEO. Uh, we also have Dasso Systems in our office, Philip Kuttner. Uh, we've got our partner, MSI. Then we get straight into the SolarWorks 2021 What's New with our technical team leader, Arpit Saxena. Uh, we also get to hear from Supply and 3D Connection for the 3D Space Mouse. Then go into the 3D Experience. So this is a little different. We get to see more of SolarWorks What's New and 3D Experience What's New. F followed by uh, Bretner from Procure It how you, to help you get solo work into your company. And finally, we have some huge prize giveaways. So what's new, 3D experience and solo works. This is a bit of our roadmap here. And you can see that we're gonna go through some of the expanded functionality, uh, a big focus on performance this time around. And also we'll actually see live solo works 2021. The difference this year, as I was mentioning before, is that we actually see 3D experience for the first time in one of these events. Find out how we can collaborate together on the cloud. We'll find how we can do some advanced simulation. And we'll also get to see some browser-based cloud design applications. What we want to see is how it combines together and how we can use the power of cloud and desktop-based. And we see what's the best in SolidWorks and what the best we can get in the cloud environment as well. So this is what our product suite looks like now. We can see it's all focused around a 3D compass. And we've got some really impressive brands, just the SolarWorks that we all know and love. We've got Anovia, we've got Delmia, we've got Simulia, Katia. We've got everything that you need to get the job done. What I'm going to do to kick off the event is I'm going to hand it over to our fearless leader, Steve Thomas, and uh, yeah, he'll give you a few words on where Catspace is going to. So. The old, uh, the old, the old Thank you very much, Gabe. Thank you very much. Is this clean? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks again, Gabe. Um, it's a new experience for me. Um, 
often been told that I've got the perfect face for radio, but nobody's ever said anything about TV. So um, we'll see how it goes. So again, good morning, everybody, and welcome to what certainly is a very, very different style of Innovation Day. Uh, many of you watching will already know that uh, we normally hold these events live at venues around the country, uh, and that they're normally a great opportunity to be personally uh, and catch up on the year's events and get valuable feedback from your business and, and how you will make use of our products. But of course, unfortunately, this year the pandemic has caused a huge disruption to uh, virtually every aspect of our lives and businesses, and it's caused us in some ways it's positive that it's caused us uh, to think a little bit more laterally in the way we overcome the problems that we come across and some of them especially this year have been quite working from home uh, and remotely has become the new norm but of course if it wasn't for the global adoption of, of the internet and cloud-based applications that we now use in our everyday lives working from home would have been uh, very different very difficult and uh, far less productive uh, for sure so this year, amongst the numerous and exciting features that we and developments that we normally uh, come to expect from SolidWorks, uh, this year's Innovation Day is also going to highlight huge advances that does the experiences uh, taking the, the whole business of engineering, manufacturing, and product designing, it's leveraging the versatility and the power of the internet, enormous range of, of powerful and so system. So whether you're at home or whether at your desk, 3D experience easily provide you with communications, collaborations with your team, your customers, your suppliers, and amongst other things, all the barriers of expensive software that might own. So that's it from me. I sincerely hope that you enjoy the presentations here today. I also hope that it uh, encourages you to think uh, Naturally, in, in, in the way you work and about the things you're going to see today. Hopefully, you'll find ways to grow. Thank you very much again and enjoy the day. With that, I'll hand you over to Philip. Thank you very much, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Appreciate your time and uh, for tuning in to, to learn what, what we have um, in the loom for you. Uh, my name is Philip Gartner and um, greeting you from Sydney, Australia. Would have loved to see you all in person as I've had the privilege to do over the last couple of years. And, and I trust we'll, we'll get around to, to do that soon again. Dear SolidWorks users. Thank you so much for tuning in today and joining us at CatSpace What's New 2021 event. The application engineers will shortly take you through the new functionality that will be available to you in SolidWorks 2021. We have not just listened to what you want and looked at what is relevant for design engineers out there today, but we have also looked at the entire technology stack of Dassault Systems and brought to you completely new ways to collaborate using our cloud technology, completely new ways to manage your projects, new ways to simulate and predict um, the design decisions you have to make using the cloud and the computing power that comes with it. We will also look at what rendering improvements you can achieve and many, many more things. Before we jump into the demonstrations though, a couple of words from my colleagues, Özge and Alex. Thanks again for tuning in. Hello, I'm Özge Kaptan. I'm Partner Sales Manager in the Source Systems and based in Melbourne. Thanks for joining us today for the SolidWorks 2021. We are so excited to have you in here today. Uh, we are going to hear more what's really been enhanced this year. Uh, and you are the part of this community and every year we are hearing really nice new features. And this year is not going to be the different. This year is also going to be the uh, similar and maybe much more or better because we are going to talk about how our uh, design data can flow and how can connect to the platform because we know storing the data 
Managing on the design files, so trying to find the right versions and collaborating with the teams is a kind of challenge, especially for nowadays, because most of the teams are working remotely and sometimes they, ha they have much more uh, questions uh, around the, the storing data or uh, securing or centralizing the data. And this year, we'd like to answer uh, those questions and we'd like to uh, show how you can connect your SOLIDWORKS data onto the platform. We're going to hear more and more details in upcoming hours and hoping you're going to enjoy these sessions. We are looking forward to see you soon and have a nice time. Thank you. Everyone is talking about the new norm especially in the face of current and emerging global challenges. Here at the Soul Systems, with the 3D Experience platform and SolarWorks 2021, our latest release, we help ensure businesses continue to thrive in the face of current and future challenges, whatever they may be. Welcome to SolarWorks 2021. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Asgir, for your brief messages. Um, our uh, user community across Australia and I hope uh, we'll get to catch up soon again uh, as soon as um, the yeah, situation in Melbourne. Before we jump into what we have under the bonnet for you in what's new Works 2021 and 3D Experience Works, I wanted to take a few moments and explain to you what innovation potential you now will have at your fingertips by accessing all the legacy and the, the, the performance and the intellectual property of DASO Systems through the 3D Experience platform. Um, DASO Systems, as you may know, has been um, uh, the company behind SolidWorks for quite a while. Um, all in all, we have um, around 25 million users of our technologies worldwide across many different industries, and you'll find us represented um, in pretty much all the countries all over the world. As a company, we still have the Dassault family as a majority shareholder. And I can assure you that in these times, um, this has proven to be a very stable and um, long-term driven company uh, with a long-term strategy to make you, our users, successful and give you the functionality you need to innovate and to be the best you can be at your jobs. Our partners like CatSpace are a very important cornerstone in our strategy to be there for you when you need them, when you're at work or when you have any questions. They're there to pick up the phone, respond to your emails and make sure that you can deliver what you need to deliver to your customers. Um, we at Dassault, we are around 200 people based in Australia that do many things for the mining industry, for the healthcare industries that uh, help our trains to, to go on time in the capital cities, besides the things we do for you in the context of SOLIDWORKS. Our mission still remains the same, to, to use technology to improve the decision making and, and the, make that decision making data based um, in our day to day uh, missions to innovate and to improve um, uh, lives of humans as a species. A very interesting fact in, in today's day and age is more than half of the vaccine candidates against COVID-19 are currently being developed using technology from Dassault Systems. So, so we're at the forefront of that innovation that is here to stay and um, that is there to make you successful. This does perfectly resonate with our purpose as a company to um, find an equilibrium, a synergy between the products that you design, the laws of nature that we have to adhere to, and, and the impact we're seeking to improve human life. Uh, so in the long run, whatever we make, whatever we design, we'll take something away from the nature, and we need to find ways to give something back. The journey we've been on, uh, on this um, technology transformation, if you will, started many years ago when a bunch of engineers came together and realized there must be a better way than doing paper drawings. They invented uh, uh, TIA, uh, the revolutionary 3D uh, design system, 
they got together, more of their peers across other departments got jealous and they ended up with digital prototypes, digital mockups. They then looked at how these products are manufactured and um, progress things to uh, life cycle management of those products. And more than eight, eight years ago, we made a pledge to take this thinking, all these concepts and bring them on the cloud through the 3D Experience platform. 3D Experience platform still is the way to go for us as Dassault, uh, but it now encompasses a very important element that is the human aspect, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence behind all that data and that information that um, the can use in our day-to-day missions. Um, so in summary, our strategy at Dassault puts the human at the center and forefront of everything we do. We have learned a lot um, throughout the years. We've been servicing various industries and we've done our best to package that know-how into experiences that will help you to connect with your customers and uh, the consumers at the end. This essentially translates to our ambition and our partners being at the forefront of, of that ambition to take this technology to you, help you understand it and help it to help you to put it at work in businesses. That space will, will work with you. Uh, to, to explain how the platform has been packaged and translated to your day-to-day -day needs. Um, the logo we have in front of us is our 3D compass. And starting as any other compass, if we start um, at the west uh, quadrant, we have our 3D modeling apps, where SolidWorks still is the uh, dominant application and definitely the most popular CAD in our technology stack. We have uh, in the south quadrant our uh, simulation applications that help you make decisions on virtual prototypes before you have manufacture any real prototypes and connecting these virtual and real worlds. Uh, moving to the east, we have our data analytics and um, uh, dashboarding apps that help you to automate a lot of the decision-making processes with the information that is relevant to you. And in the north quadrant, we have uh, our collaboration and social apps that help you run your workflows and streamline the way you collaborate on your projects in your organizations, but also if it makes sense to help you to connect with your customers and involve them in your product development and innovation processes. This is completely revolutionary and riding on the back of how our world is wired today, where people actually turn to internet and social media for not just decision making, but feedback, informal interactions, and we give you the power of this in your business processes. Um, so in summary, we have a number of extremely powerful applications in our technology stack that we have sorted based on these four quadrants of our compass. We have a vast amount of experiences through our presence in 11 different industries which form the view on the world, which help us to replicate what works for you based on where you operate. Um, this helps the 3D Experience platform to be a catalyst for innovation by bringing together the power of those roles and apps, our industry experiences, but it can also become your business model. It can become the hearts and the brains of how you run business, but also how you transact with your customers, how you schedule and run your manufacturing operations, and how you at the, at the end of the day can predict the performance of your business, can align with the trends in the marketplace, and become digital manufacturing businesses of the 21st century. This, of course, is strongly supported by our values as a business and the values that we transmit to our partner ecosystem as well. We are a community-driven uh, organization that is here to foster a digital community driven by respect and innovation. We, we are keen to learn from you and we're keen to teach you what, what we have learned and what matters to us with the aim to challenge the status quo, to improve uh, the way things are done today and to give back to the society equally as the society has given to us. And most importantly, with the 3D technology at the forefront, we want to help you to show and visualize your dreams 
by representing them as 3D models, as absolutely beautiful and realistic renders that, that help you to show that dream is possible. With that, I would like to thank you for, for tuning in and for the opportunity to address you as an audience virtually this time. And um, I will leave you with a brief story from one of our customers in Germany, GEA, uh, one of the largest manufacturers for uh, food and beverage, pharmaceutical process equipment, who utilized our uh, simulation technology as they were reopening their offices and empowered their engineers together with us to look at the process in how their canteen in one of their German offices could be made safe for people to back, start interacting, and, and, and employ this human factor to um, do this again. Um, thanks to our CFD technology, they were able to predict the movement, movement in this canteen, um, all the other factors um, that could potentially lead to prevention of uh, spread of any diseases were, were uh, calculating. And, and, and this way, uh, our customer was able to accelerate the reopening phases um, of um, uh, their canteen, bringing people back to the office and, and start adopting to the new normal. Again, this is an engineer-driven innovation. They've had a lot of this know-how in-house and we're extremely proud to be part of this journey to, uh, to bring the business back to operating in a new normal. Uh, this doesn't stop here. Just like you have um, your ways to interact with CAD Space, please feel free to tune in on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook and uh, connect with us at um, Dasso Systems. We're here to inspire you and work with you. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Philip. It's always great to hear a few words from our partner at Dasso really strengthens the partnerships that we've had and we can, will continue to have in the future. Now we oh, have okay. um, our next partner with MSI and this is, there is a method to our madness. All right? We have a few partners set up today and the reason we have them is because there's, we want you to have SolidWorks but to run SolidWorks you need the best computers and we found that they're the best computers for us. They always use the latest technology, the 10th generation or i7, Xeon processors if you need to. They got their ISV certification to make sure that their computers run with SolarWorks correctly. Uh, but the real, the real reason that I really do like MSI computers is a three year back to base warranty that they have. What other manufacturer actually offers three years back to base? They will pick it up, they will fix it, they will drop it back off to you all at no charge for three years. That's a company that really backs their products and that's a company that I really enjoy working with. So. What I'll do is I'll uh, put it through to Eddie, who will be able to tell you a bit more about the MSI laptops. Welcome everyone to our MSI section. Uh, unfortunately, we can't be at the event due to COVID-19, but I'm sure that you guys will be safe uh, at home, but we'll make sure that you don't miss out to the MSI latest product of our Creator and Workstation series. So let's dig into it. One of the difference between a workstation and a gaming laptop is that we use the NVIDIA Quadro graphics card. The Quadro graphics card, people tend to ask me what's the difference between Quadro and gaming. Uh, the main difference is that Quadro is really good at parallel calculations, whereas a gaming is focused on one performance. And people come back to me and say, does the gaming card work on what your task is doing? For example, your 3D rendering, video editing, stuff like that. The answer is Yes, however, if you want to maximize your performance, you want to save time, and you want to make sure that your work is, in, uh, is fluent, then Quadro Card's the way to go. One of the reasons why Quadro Card is the best is because they have the auto correction system, and therefore, it will try to debug anything that happens between uh, when you're rendering out. So we, we do, well, occasionally, hopefully you don't have that problem where you have a system crash and you have to start everything again. But with the Quadro card, this can be minimized as much as we can. Um, and also, one of the other things that I should mention is that all of them have 10th gen CPU and the workstation series have Xeon CPU. So if you are looking for something like the ECC RAM, 
you have to look into Sion CPU. So if you want an ECC RAM, and I've, I've got people asking me and saying, hey, I want an ECC RAM, but can I use the R 10th gen, like i7 10th gen, i9 10th gen? And the answer is no. You're paying something that you can't use. So when you want an ECC RAM, please make sure to look into the Sion CPU for it to work perfectly. As you know, that ECC RAM tends to cost a bit more than a normal RAM. And all our laptops have securities like BIOS, password security, and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll get into details. If you want to know more, feel free to come to our website or give us an email and we will try to um, let you know more about our laptops. Today I have three laptops here with me. Uh, we got the WF and the WS and our Creator series. Now these three have its own unique features which we're gonna dig into it a bit. Uh, and sit tight and let's enjoy the ride. So first off, let's start off with one of our very entry ones, the WF model. This is the WF75. This is one of our lighter versions of the workstation laptop. And as you know that laptops, one of the most important part is its portability. And of course this one is around two kilograms, which is really, really light and portable. Another thing that's really important is that we've designed it so that there is a slight lift on the table so that you can have a little incline for when you're typing, which is more comfortable for you to feel. And also we have an HDMI port for you to have external display. Um, however, if you want to have more ports, feel free to get a dongle as well. With this new WF model, this can go up to two T2000 graphics. And therefore, it's a really entry one. So if you want something portable, entry, budget-friendly ones, this is something you can look into. The next one we're gonna to go to is a more of a premium one. It is personally one of my favorite. WS has been one of the light and portable series, but high performance uh, segment in all our workstation level. Our WS65 is a really, really solid build. This powerhouse can make you work at home and work wherever you want and make sure that efficiency is maximized. If you can look at this, we have a one HDMI port and one Thunderbolt port. And this Thunderbolt port you can actually charge in as well. So if you forget your power adapter and you find a power bank that charges through a Type-C, you can charge it through here as well. And also, one of the most important thing, it's got the full-size SD card. Even though this is really light and portable, but the keyboard feedback is still really, really good. You can hear the clicking sound, it's got a really good feedback, and I think it's one of the best solutions to go for it. Um, and this does have a 4K option. Um, if you like a 4K one, WS is the one that you're looking for. And also, it's got the finger recognition as well, um, the same as the WF as well. In fact, in all our workstation series, we all have the fingerprint. The WS66 comes with RTX 5000, which is top of the line in the RTX Quadro card. There's nothing more powerful than the RTX 5000 right now. So if you want a portable, powerful machine, WS65, 66, my bad. WS66 is something we're looking at. Sometimes you're looking for a, um, well, a, a laptop that you probably don't need a Quadro card, but you still want really portable performance. We have the new Creator series. Now, Creator is a bit different from the workstation. So Creator Series, it's their own series. It uses the RTX gaming card. Yes, the gaming card, as we mentioned, it does work, um, but we wouldn't suggest it unless you're doing 3D, 3D, uh, 2D designs, video editing and stuff. Why do we want to introduce this is one of the most important features this model has that other model doesn't have, is that this is a 4K mini LED common certified panel screen. We call this the True Pixel. Oh, just a side note, our 4K version is actually Coleman certified. 
uh, because Coleman is more widely known in Hollywood. And we will make sure that the pictures, the images you see on the screen, no matter what you're working at, it will present its best form. Well, as you can see, hopefully you can, um, it is not as thin and light as the WS. And the, one of the reason is because that this panel is really high grade. Mini LED, MSI is the first one to introduce the mini LED technology. It's got a thousand nits. Basically, you can get blind from it. I'm kidding. But this thousand nits means that you can actually tell the really detailed difference on the panel, which normally other panels like OLED or something like that, you can't tell the difference. 1000 nits is amazing. Uh, normally an OLED panel will go up to around 500 nits. So as you can tell the difference, that is almost one, like two times more the brightness that it can, it can give. And also, even though this is not a workstation series, we still have a fingerprint um, on this panel. And also this trackpad, like the WS, it's a bit different, is that this trackpad uses a glass material trackpad. It's actually really smooth and silky feeling. It's the highest end material you can use for a trackpad. We wanna make sure that when you use your laptop, you can, well, you can kind of give up your mouse and still work with the trackpad with ease. And the other best part about this is that since this is a bit thicker than the WS, however, because of that, our keyboard has a greater feedback. This keyboard is actually a lot better to my, my feeling, a lot better on the feedback part than the WS, but really depends. Some people like it, some people doesn't, but this is one of the strong features it has. Creator 17 has a few different IO ports, which is similar to the WS66. However, there is two Type C's, um, USB Type C's with one Thunderbolt port and one HDMI port. So you can connect up to two external screens. And it also has a micro SD card. So if you have SD card, you'll have to buy a bundle, uh, a dongle to support the micro SD and also have three USB ports for use. Now, this is these three laptops have another feature that is exclusively to MSI, which is what we call the Creator Center. So what does Creator Center do? So Creator Center is a software inside that is developed from MSI. Now, a lot of different software out there, uh, for example, big things like Photoshop, Photoshop, AutoCAD, stuff like that, they require a different amount of power between CPU and GPU. So how do we know about this? Well, we don't. We don't know which one needs more CPU, which one, which one takes up more GPU. However, MSI, we have a dedicated team who works with this individual software uh, vendors to test it out and understand how the software works. That's why MSI Workstation Series, all of them have ISV certified uh, certificate, which is given by this individual software designers, where they, uh, the software company, where they said, okay, they've tested out the MSI laptop and they make sure that MSI laptop will work with the software you are using. And from that co-work, we actually dig dug into how each software works. Some of them requires more GPU, some requires more CPU. For example, uh, if you talk about video editing, um, video editing requires more uh, GPU when you are editing, but when you're exporting, they require more CPU. So how do we know that? We don't. And what happens if you don't have the Creator Center is that the software, it's the, 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 uh, the computer itself will try to find a balance between 50% power between CPU and GPU to try to render out and try to solve out all the, you know, the back end before it, uh, behind it. But since we have the credit center, we realize that, for example, okay, 80% is required for exporting. So therefore we would re adjust the resource in the CPU to make sure that 80% is used to export the video while the 20% GPU is running in the background for other stuff. So we have a lot of different modes in our credit center to help you work more efficiently 
and this is exclusive to MSI. The other thing is that we understand that laptops has been taken around everywhere. So sometimes you're working in a coffee shop, you're working in the library, you're working anywhere, and you don't really want to have your fan spinning like crazy loud, um, you know, during during your work. I right, don't want to disturb anybody else. Therefore, in our credit center, we do have different modes. We have the silent mode. Uh, of, co of course, we have another battery mode to make sure that uh, you can have your longest battery life you can and performance mode, which obviously is going for 100% performance. It does get a bit loud because you're trying to maximize the performance. You know, as you know, semiconductors, you can't do anything about that. Uh, the, the more power it consumes, the more heat it's gonna emit. But however, what we can do is we're gonna build a really good cooling system inside to make sure that the speed is spun really fast so that all the heat can be emitted out. So that's one of the few important things. So um, yes, and all of our MSI laptops, we have a really crazy cooling system inside, which it's hard to see, but uh, if you want to know more information on it, feel free to come to our website and have a look. And I'm sure you will love our MSI laptop. So to sum it up, we have a lot of laptops here for you to work on. The WF series for you to easily take around, simple. If you just want something and you have budget concerns, WF is the way to go. And of course the WS, if you're looking for the premium feeling with all the IO ports there, connect up to two screens with RTX graphics, um, WS is really the way to go. Or if you said, hey, you know, performance is great, not my 100% concern, but I want the best, best panel you can get in the market right now with the mini LED technology, then create a series 4K version is the way to go. So uh, that's it to wrap up for all our MSI laptops right now. We do have a lot of other series, including some gaming or stuff like that. If you're looking for more of a budget concern, feel free to look into, but as I said from the beginning, Workstation is your best choice if you come to talk about 3D rendering, 2D rendering, or video editing. Um, we would suggest you to go to Quadro Card. And thank you for watching it today, and hopefully you guys are safe at home, and enjoy the MSI laptop. Thanks Eddie for that. We've been partnering with MSI for quite a number of years and I'm always excited to see what the new range brings and all our application engineers here at Catspace actually use MSI so we're looking forward to getting these upgraded for the guys. So we're back to the roadmap here and we can see what we've got next is actually the SolarWorks side of things. When we're looking at some of the uh, functionality, the performance and the actual live demonstrations. But before we go in there, I do like to um, share one of my favorite Every year I choose a favorite and I like to share this one. Now, I've been using SolarWorks for around 12 years. Yes, I am that old. I do look a little bit old, but uh, 12 years is what I've been using it for. Now, I don't know about you, but the setup that I used to have was SolarWorks on one screen and then the PowerPoint or the PDF or something that I'm designing on the other screen. I finished the model and I'm trying to get the color onto the model, but I can't because it's a program and I can't. So I had to download a new uh, program called ColorCop. Now, after all these years, SolarWorks has actually listened and they've actually incorporated this ability to pick a color from a different program anywhere on your computer and then apply that color to your models. I'm really happy to see that that's been added to the core functionality of SolarWorks, which is why I decided to mention it. But that's not it. They, uh, they talk to customers and they listen. And how do they do that? Well, the SolarWorks product definition team actually conducted a quite a number of surveys around the world and asked the SolarWorks users what they wanted from this new release of SolarWorks 2021. And the majority of the responses were bug fixes, quality and performance. That's what they wanted to see. You know what, SolarWorks has done that. They've actually spent about 60% of their time in this release to fix up a lot of these bugs and improve the quality and the performance. 
Now, what does that mean for us? Because we don't see any buttons, we don't see exactly what's happened on the face of it. But what that means on the back end is that they've actually increased the number of resolved bugs or software performance reports by up to 25% just this year. Now they gave themselves a goal. They gave themselves three years to try and make things change. What does that mean? Well, they rank these bugs by severities, one, two, three, and four. But how do they rank that? Well, it's all a mixture of customer hits and the impact of the bug. The more customer hits and the bigger the impact of the bug, the quicker they fix it. Now, this is usually the class in the severity one and two. Now, historically, SolarWorks has been pretty good at fixing these pretty quickly. You get your hot fixes, and these are done in the service packs that we regularly get. But unfortunately, what that means is those with severity three and four, they've caused a little bit of a backlog. And so out of that goal, a three-year goal, they're about halfway into it now, but a year and a half into it, they want to try and reduce all of these, the one, two, three, and fours, by 90%. So that means that hopefully in the 2021 service pack four, we get to see less than 10% of the bugs left over. What I think it's great. I think it's fantastic that they've given themselves this goal and that we are actually going to benefit from it. Even though there's no buttons, we get to see performance and reliability. And that's what most people ask about. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually hand it over to Arpit Saxena, technical team leader here at Catspace. I can't tell you how excited he is. He's been all week to do this presentation and show you exactly what SolarWorks 2021 has to offer. Up it. Thanks, Gabe. I hope I'm excited. <laughs> all right. Hi, everyone, and welcome. So I will be taking you through some of the enhancements um, to 3D CAD in SolarWorks 2021. So to begin with, let's start with user experience. So often customizing your user interface is a balance between minimizing the clutter and having right tools accessible when you really need them. With SolarWorks 2021, you no longer have to choose. To complete this part, we need to cut and pattern this particular sketch However, you'll see sketch and part color are very similar. In SolarWorks 2021, a column of representative colors is shown, making it easy to find the item you'd like to change. For this particular case, let's go ahead and choose green color to make sketches more visible. Also new in 2021 is the ability to collapse the command manager, allowing you to reclaim as much screen real estate as possible. Quick access tools can be moved to Command Manager to further reduce the extra icons. These tools are available in Command Manager tabs up at the top. A faster way to work is of course the shortcut key which is the S key. However, it does not yet have the pattern command we need. New in SolidWorks 2021 is the ability to search for a particular command and then as usual drag and drop it onto the shortcut bar or the heads up display toolbar. Now that we've set up our shortcut bar, finishing our design is trivial. Notice how little my mouse must move to create this cut using the sketch and then pattern it around the center hole with the combination of just shortcut key and the right clicks. Lastly, SolveWorks 2021 offers redo command which is more complete. This means that if you accidentally undo a feature, you won't have to spend extra time recreating it. These are few of the enhancements to make your experience more user-friendly and quick. Now let's take a look at some of the enhancements to the path modeling. When working with sheet metal parts, we've long been able to create an edge flange on the curved edges like these on the right, but we were limited to the curved edges originating from the planar faces. Now, with SolarWorks 2021, edge flanges can be created on the curved edges originating from the non-planar faces, such as those in this bend area. Familiar flange customization tools are available to help define the edge flange, such as length, angle, flange length dimensioning method, and flange position. The preview shows how the edge flange will be created all the way around the part. This new edge flange surely looks great and it provides more stiffness to this angled bracket. And of course, last but not the least, this edge flange can be flattened, ready to be detailed or exported to DXF for fabrication. <coughs> this edge flange is actually great for structural integrity, but is also useful for enclosure and guarding such as this cover. The edge flange on the far side 
needs to protect the components of this navigation control unit. Full editing capabilities are now available, so we can arrange the direction of flange as well as the angle to wrap around the internal components to keep them safe. This new edge flange capability along non-linear edges extends the robust sheet metal capabilities of SOLIDWORKS 2021 for many applications such as adding stiffening ribs and enclosures. Now let's have a look at enhancement to 3MF format. This LED, light, this LED light assembly contains parts of various colors, applied textures and transparency and needs to be 3D printed. In SOLIDWORKS 2021, support for export and import of 3MF files gets even better. Now, color, textures and transparency are supported on export. This information can be stored in the 3MF file to be used for manufacturing or other applications. Now when opening a 3MF file in SOLIDWORKS 2021, we now support many more appearances. As you can see, per facet and per vertex coloring as well as textures and transparency can now be visualized when importing the 3MF files as graphic bodies. Additive manufacturing continues to rise in capability and popularity and SOLIDWORKS continues to embrace these technologies. Let's move to the enhancements and weldments. Now when working with the weldment environment, it is common to use various sizes of weldment members. The horizontal tubes in this frame are 2 by 2 square tubes, whereas the vertical tubes are 3 by 2 rectangular tubes. The weldment trim extend tool is, is used to trim the tubes to each other with various options for the corner types. The two end butt trims dictate how one tube trims to the other and the mitre trim bisects the angle between the two tubes creating an equal angle mitre trim. Since these tubes are of different profile, the equal angle mitre does not produce the desired results. And hence, in SOLIDWORKS 2021, there is new option for these mitre trims, the flush mitre, which does exactly what we want. It trims the tube so they meet flush. The other vertical members are mirrored and hence they update as well. Now this vermin will need to be painted. So let's go ahead and edit the appearance and choose a color. We have wide variety of colors to choose from on the color palette and use the, or we can use the color spectrum to define a custom color. But often we need to choose specific colors that are dictated by customer. Let's take a look at this Square Robert webpage. Here we can learn all about their products and their initiative. But we really want is the color in the banner of this page. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, there is an option for easily selecting colors that do not exist on the palette. Just drag the dropper icon over any area on the screen and color under the support or dropper is applied to the selection. For vertical members of this weldment, uh, I would like to choose a different color. So let's select several of these vertical member bodies and again drag the dropper onto the orange color in the logo and apply it to the bodies. Thus, the new color picker works on any image displayed on the screen including colors from popular paint vendors and color system websites. Last but not the least, custom properties are a great way to store information about a document such as description, creation date or material. These can be leveraged to automatically populate the tile blocks, bill of materials or PDM. Sometimes it is necessary to calculate a result to define a custom property. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, equations are supported. Choose equation as the property type and you will have access to global variables, math functions and the properties. For this particular weldment, we want to define an estimated cost that is based on a global variable, which is estimated finished cost and multiplied that by the mass of the product. This gives a result of $428.60. Equations can be used in cutlist properties as well. The split in the cutlist properties is used or cutlist sorry is used four times and we would like to know the total length of all the plates together. Again, we'll go ahead and define a property 
which is total uh, length in this case. Select equation as the property type and for calculation I'll multiply it by the quantity of plates um, and by the length which gives me the total length of 2052. Parts are foundations for creating assemblies. With these enhancements, SolarWorks continues to enhance the already existing powerful capabilities when working with parts. Now, let's move on to our assembly modeling. Right. With SolarWorks 2021, you will now have more streamlined tools to help you assemble, pattern, and analyze your assemblies. Now, while mating in SolarWorks 2021, you will find a streamlined property manager. Instead of expanding sections for each group type, there are now tabs for each group, making it easier to find the correct mate. Looking at previously created mate, switching alignment presents the question as how to handle the other components and mates impacted by this change. Choosing no, oftentimes means overdefining the other mates to solve for new alignment which creates more work to fix. Choosing yes would have avoided this issue by instead flipping the other affected mates, making this task a simple fix. In SolidWorks 2021, there is a new system option under assemblies to choose how to always select one of these choices or retain the prompt. Choosing always by default Flip the alignment of the other mate affected in this scenario. This will definitely save time and confusion and ensures you always get the, the results you desire. When creating mates to slots in SolidWorks 2021, you can now choose the default type of position. In this example, center of slot has been selected as the default choice. Likewise, there is now an option to lock the rotation of the, uh, of the screw, just like um, what we had in concentric mates. The default slot mate location is actually a new document setting. So you can find that under document properties, mates, section. This eliminates the need to regularly change the location um, type when adding new slot mate to your design, saving you a little bit of extra time and accidentally choosing the wrong constraint. SolidWorks have always offered the flexibility to change the configuration of each component instance within a pattern. However, sometimes you may just want all the components to reference the original instance or what we call a seed. This can be time consuming to do one at a time. New in SolidWorks 2021 is the option to synchronize the configuration of all, com all component instances created by the pattern. This new option also helps from in inadvertently changing the configuration of any of these components from the drop down or short drop down menu and by locking this component within the component properties dialog box. This ensures that as you make any configuration changes to seed components of the pattern, those changes will be properly propagated. Finally, interference detection. Interference detection is a powerful tool to quickly find issues within your design. SolarWorks 2021 now offers this option to save um, the interference out in a spreadsheet. You even have the choice to capture a screenshot of each interference so that they can be shared and reviewed with others inside your organization. This offers a new collaborative way to review interferences in the design and determine if they are intentional due to fit conditions or to collaborate with others uh, regarding the changes that should be made to solve these interferences. SolidWorks 2021 offers new tools like these to design more efficiently by streamlining and adding more value to your common workflows. Now let's take a look at the enhancements to the drawing. Introduced in SolidWorks 2020, detailing mode is a great way to open, or to open massive and complex drawings in a matter of seconds, but it's not just limited to viewing the drawing. Detailing mode allows you to perform typical detailing tasks such as editing and adding dimensions and annotations. The model does not get loaded, so sharing the drawing files is easy, but rest assured the drawing views are intact and there is no loss of detail. Detailing mode supports the editing of existing annotations such as notes and dimensions. Edit existing notes can be edited to add or remove information 
and you have full access to annotation editing tools. The front view of this drawing is displayed as a broken view with foreshortened dimension to allow for a more concise display of information. But the top view is not broken. Now detailing mode supports quite a few or actually three more views, detail view, break view and crop view. So similar to the front view, let's go ahead and break the top view in three places. You can also see that all of the break line styles are available as well as the gap between the breaks. Ordinate dimensions are supported and we can add additional items to the existing ordinate dimensions such as these edges and center lines. Detail views can now be created in similar manner just like you would do in a fully resolved drawing. So all you have to do is either draw the detail circle or choose a sketch profile and place the view. When detailing the drawings, it was really common to define whole information and now in SOLIDWORKS 2021, detailing mode actually supports whole callouts and you can also go ahead and place four shortened dimensions wherever it is necessary. Existing dimensions now have the full editing capability. For instance, here we can add tolerance on the dimension between the holes and all of these properties are now available including its precision. Next you will see that the location of the first hole is not properly defined to the center of the hole. So all of the controls on every tab of Dimension Property Manager are available so we can define the arc condition to the dimension to the center of the hole. As you can see, these enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2021 extends the capability of detailing mode to fully detail your drawings in record time without having to load full drawings containing large assemblies, lots of sheets, many configurations or resource intensive views. But the enhancement to the drawing environment does not stop there. Regardless of how you open a drawing, the dimension tool has been enhanced to make it easier to create dimension. Notice how the dimension text is transparent after the first selection, making it easier to record your second selection. Media balloons are frequently used in German automotive industry and are a requirement for many European customers. Now, with SOLIDWORKS 2021, a new leader type is available for the balloons and notes to allow users to tag inspection points as per their VDA requirements which is available, of course, under the more properties. The position and rotations are easily manipulated and these can be used directly by SOLIDWORKS inspection. Finally, when working with sketch geometry on a drawing, it is common to add relations just as you, as you would do in the sketch environment. Previously, these relations were in Property Manager, but now SOLIDWORKS 2021, the sketch relation pop-up toolbar is available allowing you to apply sketch relation with minimal mouse travel. Improvement in drawing environment are always amongst the most popular enhancements with SOLIDWORKS user base. And with SOLIDWORKS 2021, the tradition continues. So this concludes my part of taking you all through a few of the enhancements of 3D CAD, especially regarding user interface, part modeling, assembly modeling, and drawing. I hope with these few enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2021, you can streamline your design process and get your products to the market faster. Thank you guys for putting it with my beautiful accent for the last 20 minutes and I, I hope it was pretty useful and not <laughs> challenging. Now with this, I'll hand over to Gabe. Thanks. Thank you, Alpert. As you can see, he's very enthusiastic, really loves SOLIDWORKS, and it's great to see passion like that from our technical team leader here at CADSpace. Moving along with the, today's event, uh, we actually have our partner, Supply and 3D Connection, sharing some information with us. Now, you have your MSI laptop. Now, what we need to do is increase your efficiency. We need to make sure that you're faster and you get better at SOLIDWORKS. And to do that, we present our partner, Supply and 3D Connection, who will share some reasons as to why the Space Mouse is essential when working with SOLIDWORKS. So uh, just a, a reminder as well, 
the 3D connection actually works with SolarWorks and 3D Experience. So if you've got X Design, if you've got X Shape, it works right out of the box with the Space Mouse as well. Hand it over to Vincent to share some information. Hi everybody and welcome to the, the 3D Connection presentation. Before we kick off, I would like to thank Catspace for organizing this virtual event and Supply for giving us the opportunity to talk about our professional products for engineering performance. We have a lot to share, so let's kick off. Connection has its foundations in the design and development of the world's most advanced, precise and comfortable peripherals for design and engineering professionals. First only focused on 3D input devices, the Space Mouse. We have a full range of products that ensures there is a solution for everyone, from the entry-level Space Mouse Compact to the professional desktop solution Space Mouse Enterprise. There is no other device in the world that provides smooth navigation like the Space Mouse can. But before we start, I have an important message for you. Next to the raffle of the event organized by Catspace, 3D Connection is giving you an extra chance to win a fantastic prize, the Space Mouse Enterprise Kit. The only thing you have to do is to scan the QR code on this page or scan the QR code on the banners in the website of the event and fill out the form. It is as easy as can be. At the end of this presentation, the QR code will appear again, so no worries if you were not able to scan it right now. You can send in your application until October 9, and we will draw a winner and announce it on October 12, so don't hesitate. It was back in 1987 when the first version of our kind of space mouse sensor was patented, an optoelectronic measurement device in a user-centric housing. In 1993, the Space Mouse Classic started to clear the path for our today's Space Mouse lineup, today ranging from Space Mouse Wireless to Space Mouse Enterprise. In the year 2015, we introduced the first cat mouse. Thanks to all the hard work we have put into the development of this device, we managed to engage with a new audience and we kept on developing our brand and product since, as you can see in the timeline down below. We have partnerships with the leaders in the industry on software and hardware and all of them acknowledge that 3D Connection is the only product available in the world when it comes to 3D navigation. Here we have a list of customers that we serve around the world. In our portfolio we have big enterprises, but also a lot of self-employed people. And all of them are having one thing in common. They love and are using our 3D connection technology every day in their design and development departments. How come? We have introduced, optimized and transferred a simple concept of peeling an apple into an engineering solution. Can you peel an apple with one hand? The basics are simple. In a traditional situation, you perform all engineering and design tasks in a serial sequence. You are not able to navigate when you activate commands. But when you take away all navigation tasks from one hand and bring them to the other, you start working with two hands. And our technology makes it possible to navigate and activate commands at the same time, in parallel. It is the two-handed workflow that ensures a spread of the workload over both hands, giving you a bandwidth increase and gives you more control over your design. Working with the three mouse is like holding the 3D model in your hand. And just for your understanding, the normal mouse cannot be replaced with the 3D mouse. You just need them both when working in 2D or 3D environments. As you can see in the table on the right side of this slide, an engineer performs over 1870 finger movements per hour if he or she is not having a 3D mouse. When using a 3D mouse, the amount of movements are reduced by 28.6% to an acceptable level of around 1330. The usage of the mouse wheel, so I mean clicking and scrolling, is decreased by almost 500 movements by introducing a space mouse in the workflow. 
Another effect of this two-handed way of working is that both arms are supported by the table, so your sitting posture improves, the workload is also spread over two hands. All these effects will help you to prevent developing issues related to RSI or carpent tunnel syndrome, which could be very painful and have an impact on your ability to perform your work. So if your arm, wrist or even your shoulder sometimes feels tired or painful, this might be a good moment to take a closer look at the 3D connection tools. So now that we have explained the philosophy behind our tools and technology, let's move on to the actual tools that we have developed to be able to perform the two-handed workflow. From the Space Mouse Enterprise that's built for top engineering performance to Space Mouse Wireless that provides advanced 3D navigation anywhere, we have a solution for everyone. What all 3D mice have in common is the central controller cap with a 6 degrees of freedom optical sensor. With this cap, you can move and orientate your object on your screen and it allows you to take away all navigation tasks from your traditional mouse. The devices with the ergonomical handrest are what we call the professional devices. These devices hold more options and features like a complete set of keyboard modifiers, view keys and function keys. These features will reduce the hand travel to your keyboard. And because your hand is on the soft coated and ergonomical handrest, you will experience more comfort during your engineering tasks than ever before. And with the Space Mouse Enterprise, we have redefined all the ergonomics to provide you the best and most comfortable working experience during your daily engineering sessions. Currently, we have five different models of Space Mouse in our portfolio. We suggest to use the professional devices when you are working for more than two hours per day with a CAT system, either in 2D or 3D. It provides you more comfort and better control over the controller cap. Although the base of the Space Mouse Wireless and Space Mouse Compact is very stable and heavy, with an ergonomical handrest, you will not be able to lift the device from your table. And that's the reason for a lot of customers to upgrade their device to a professional one. On our website, we have created a comparison table with all differences between the different models. So if you would like to know more, just visit our website. The second part of our solution is the cap mouse. This is the world's first mouse specifically designed for cap professionals. The cap mouse accompanies and complements the traditional space mouse product line. Nowadays, the cap mouse is even recognized as an ideal input device for users of professional design and engineering applications. What differs a cap mouse from any other mouse on the market? First of all, you can see the lineup. We tick all important boxes, full size and compact, wired and wireless, and we even have a full size wireless left-handed version available. Also, we have used the best and most durable materials and components available on the market today to reach superior comfort and great ergonomics. We use the highest quality rubber and the painting we use is against having fingerprints on the buttons. So the surface looks and feels really nice. The new scroll wheel design of Smart Mouse Wheel 2 guaranteeing refined control and adaptable navigation. It even offers advanced scrolling modes based on activity. And of course the professional ergonomic design. We introduced the middle mouse button again. It is designed specifically for CAT users who require a third button to access their application functions. Using only 33% of the force of a scroll wheel click, the middle mouse button is ideal for CAT applications and avoids accidental scrolling when using the middle mouse button. The angle shape produces ideal wrist rotation for a more natural hand placement posture, reducing the muscle and tendon discomfort frequently encountered with traditional mice. The incurved thumb rest gives your thumb an ergonomically natural place to hold on to the mouse and easy access to its side buttons. It also lifts the thumb to a higher position to support the wrist rotation. And all the three main buttons offer a concave design. They are sculpted to guide the fingertips to their ideal positioning for an organic natural feel. In the end, the cat mouse is an extension of your hand. We have built the cat mouse product line to provide precision, top performance and durability. 
All cap mouse come with seven buttons of which five can be programmed in our software. Three dedicated mouse buttons, smart scroll wheel 2 and durable mechanical switches with up to 50 million clicks. The high resolution sensor and PTFE feet on the bottom provide the perfect blend of control and speed for your cat mouse, especially when you are using a cat mouse pad as well. The combination of ergonomic design features and intelligent software come together in our cat mouse range to create an organically connected workflow you can feel. So which one would be the one for you? Just check this nice comparison table on our website, 3dconnection.com, to find out. The heart of our solution is 3D Expert 10. We use this single piece of free software to unleash the power and capabilities of the 3D Connection devices. Its simple yet powerful and intuitive interface makes it easy to individualize all of your 3D Connection products to peak performance, according to your preferences. It lets you pen, zoom and scroll in Microsoft Word, Excel and Internet Explorer, as well as scroll in Firefox and Chrome. It is a chance to experience the 3D Connection device capabilities more often and in more applications. One of the best things about 3D Expert 10 is that it recognizes which application is active and switches to the application profile that you have created. This gives you the comfort of having your own preferences in each application you use. On our website, we have dedicated a page to 3D Expert 10 as it holds more capabilities than we can explain during this presentation. 3D Connection provides a complete solution for the professional engineer or designer in one box. We call it the Space Mouse Enterprise Kit 2. Whenever you purchase a kit, you almost get the cat mouse solution for free. Isn't that interesting for you? By the way, in our raffle, you can win the Space Mouse Enterprise Kit number one, which is similar to kit number two, only with the wired mouse in it. So don't forget to scan the QR code to stand a chance to win this prize. For the mobile workers, we have Space Mouse Wireless Kit number two, the mobile cat solution. It has Space Mouse Wireless and Cat Mouse Compact Wireless in one box. Coming to the end of this presentation, I would like you to understand why you should be using 3D connection technology and products. Besides purchasing a high quality and professional solution, you also get access to our exclusive after sale services like, for instance, technical support in your preferred language. All products come with at least two years of warranty and your Space Mouse Enterprise can get up to four years of warranty when you register it on our website. All our products are globally available through our partners and in our local web shop. So no worries if you have to travel to another country or part of the world. We are always there to support you with our tools and technology. Your IT department only has to maintain one piece of software for all 3D connection devices used in your company. By the way, did I mention the ROI of the investment in 3D connection space mouse already? It is typically three months and in the worst case scenarios, it's eight to 10 months. So there's really no economical or financial reason for not investigating the possibilities of our solutions for your company. So if you're interested in our technology or would like to learn more, please scan the QR code And as you can see, there's quite a lot of improvements that you can get, a lot of efficiency gains we can get by using the 3D mouse. And actually, we will be giving one of these away later on um, for a little surprise that uh, you may or may not have known. But that uh, competition, the, the extra competition that 3D Connection and Supply are offering, you'll find the link in the description down below. So feel free to put your name and your details in there and you can actually win one of the enterprise kits yourself as well. So moving along, we're up to the second part of the technical presentations where we'll be talking a little bit more about 3D experience and how we can combine the two together. I don't have a favorite just yet. There's too many, too many cool things in 3D experience, but I'd really love to hear from you. So again, I'll put that contact details on the, at the end of the presentation. Feel free to send me an email. Tell me what you like about it. Put it in the comments. We've actually got one of our Catspace techs replying to as many comments as possible while this is going on. So please sh sh let us know how it goes. If you want to come in and test it, feel free to come into our office. We even got the 3D mouse in our training rooms as well, so you can try it out. Now, moving along to the 3D experience, uh, we have three main sections we want to cover. We might not cover all of them. I think we might not actually go through the simulation side of things, but I'll give you a little brief overview. As Philip alluded to earlier in the presentation, we try and revolve around this 3D compass. We're up at the North Quadrant now, and it's all about cloud collaboration. This uh, cloud collaboration is actually powered by Anovia Works, and Anovia is a really big brand in Dasso, and it gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of capabilities with this technology. What does that mean? What is Anovia Works in cloud collaboration? Well, it's PLM out of the box. It's cloud storage, secure data that is available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. So if you have a phone, you're out on the road, you can access all that data straight right out of your phone. 
the next section, again, we might not cover it. As I said before in the presentation, there's a lot of things we couldn't cover. So keep an eye out for another webinar, a couple of blog posts for all the things that we did miss. But in the simulation side of things, this is actually in the lower quadrant, the south quadrant in the 3D compass. And it's all about making your virtual prototype a reality. We've got some linear static analysis all the way to some really complex non-linear analysis. And what we're doing is here is actually helping you leverage the power of cloud computing. We can even simulate a car crash. That's advanced and that's quick using the cloud computing. Finally, we've got the cloud-based design. We've got a few different types of uh, CAD applications you, that you can use on your browser. We've got industrial design applications, X-Shape, to help you with that push and pull mechanism to help you with the organic shapes that you can create. Then you can put it into your mechanical design, all powered by Katia. And with a good technology in the background, you know that this is going to be quite intuitive and easy to use. We then also have the sheet metal capabilities that's actually new in 3D Experience 2021. And finally, we have the rendering, again, also new. We won't be able to cover it, but we will have a blog later on in the year to show you all about it. Now, what I'll do is I'll pass it on to Sajith Wei Hennege. Uh, who just two days ago was my bead brother, but uh, you'll see him on the screen shortly. Thanks, Jeez. Thank you, Gabe. Um, hello, everyone. Um, hope all, the, all of you are staying safe. Um, I'm connecting with you today from the comfort of my own home due to restrictions in Melbourne. So sorry in advance for any lags or technical issues. Uh, just know that if you hear any kids crying in the background, they're definitely not mine. Um, anyway, without wasting too much of your time, we'll get into it. Um, all right. So as a designer, you've probably always required the most powerful and sometimes the most expensive uh, workstations on the market. But with more of the workforce working remotely than ever before, you need a more flexible environment. With the 3D Experience platform, you can design on the cloud with any device without sacrificing the performance and power required for you to stay productive, no matter where you are. In this first demonstration, you'll, you're going to see an entire design process um, on some components of the circular saw from concept to manufacturing, entirely within a browser. Um, I will be both the industrial designer in charge of ergonomics and the mechanical engineer who will prepare the models for manufacturing in this story. So now let's go ahead and drop in on the industrial designer role in charge of ergonomics. Um, and uh, I, will be, I will be shaping a grip handle for this circular saw uh, using 3D sculpture. Give us one second. So getting started is easy. We will pick a cylinder and drop it directly on the origin. Since flat faces will be incorporated into this design, we can get a head start by checking the crease edges option while placing this initial shape. With 3D sculpture, we can freely push and pull the model into any shape imaginable. But most of the time, designs are required to fit within a specific boundary. Scale by distance applies a parametrically driven bounding box where we can enter a series of dimensions and the shape snaps precisely to size. Using the Control A keyboard shortcut, all vertices can be selected at once. This makes translating an entire shape to a new position a breeze. Next, we will use uh, symmetry using the uh, ZX plane, which is one of my favorite features by far on X shape, by the way. Um, it helps us make changes to both sides of the cylindrical body in one go. To maintain a uniform aspect ratio while scaling this side face, we, will, we can hold the Alt key while dragging any of the scaling dots on the robot manipulator. This shortcut will generally scale in all three dimensions, but since this face was planar, it conveniently maintains its flatness. Opening the door to many creative workflows, multiple sets of features can be created within a single physical product. In this case, we want to propose various concepts of this grip by creating a new feature set for each of the concepts. We can simply copy and paste features from one set into another. Each feature set can have unique color properties and display states. 
And by double clicking the copied subdivision feature, we can get started on the first concept of the grip while leaving the original star shape intact. By utilizing the same alt drag scaling technique, we can wrap up this concept in no time by pushing and pulling the model into our desired shape. After this, we can exit, exit our sub-D modeling environment and save our model. Finally, to collect some feedback from the rest of the team, we can post this entire 3D model to a community directly from the design app. This streamlines the communication process, allowing teams to arrive at the perfect design faster than ever. With the ability to create subdivisional models directly in a browser on any device, complex shapes have never been easier to create. So now let's move on to some of the mechanical design features that's available on the platform. After starting the design in 3D Sculpture to create the ergonomic grip handle, we now check in with the mechanical engineer, uh, which is going to be me again in this case, um, to complete the design and prepare it for manufacturing using 3D Creator. So first, we will need to create the stem connecting the body of the circular saw to the grip handle. To start, we can create a mounting flange with little effort. By pre-selecting a face in context of the assembly, we can skip the sketch and extrude our first feature. Next, we will sketch an ellipse on the newly created flange to extrude our connecting body. Sketched ellipses include construction lines, making them easy to adjust. For example, we can snap the quadrants of the ellipse to the midpoints of the external model edges. Or we can also click on both the point and the edge opting to create the same relationship in the pop-up menu. These relations will fully define our sketch. Next, we will start a new extrude feature and select this sketched ellipse as our profile. While extruding the feature, a preview is also displayed, making it easy to confirm that the correct addition has been applied. We'll switch the view to get a better look at our new model we just created. Looking at it closely, um, on second thought, I'm not really happy with this resulting shape. I would definitely prefer a much sleeker look. To accomplish this, we can simply roll the design back before this extrude feature to create a curved path. We will join the existing sketch entities that I created before with the two point spline. With the splines, we can simply double click it to activate the spline handles to achieve full control over the curvature. Relationships can be applied to both ends of the spline and the handles can be adjusted until it looks just right. After this, we can pretty much roll our model forward to edit the, extrude, uh, edit the original extrude feature. Not only can an extrude feature be changed to an extrude cut, um, it can even be transformed into a revolve or in this case, a sweep. It's called the super feature, and it provides an unprecedented level of flexibility um, as all references are maintained. Since this part will be injection molded, it's important to specify a parting line. By activating the parting line analysis option on the draft analysis tool um, and choosing the XY plane as, plane as our plane for pull direction, we can pinpoint its exact location. After adding a few more features, you will see that now we have split the body into two. To make these bodies easier to work with, they can be divided into two separate sets of features. This way, each set of features will be independent from each other. By hiding the other feature set, we can focus only on the lower half of the design. To lighten, and, uh, lighten the design and prepare it for molding, we will add a two millimeter shell feature and to reinforce this hollow design, we can sketch a profile for a rib. Even without perfectly trimming or extending the sketch entities, the rib feature will project the geometry to fill the internal volume of the component. Thanks to the flexible design workflows, design changes are nothing to be afraid of in 3D Creator. 
And with the visual insight provided with, within modes like draft analysis, we can be rest assured that this part is ready to be sent to manufacturing. All right, so let's have a look at some of the sheet metal features now. So as you know, having the right tools allows you to get to market faster and reduce costs. For example, this milled bracket and base plate of this circular saw are not only expensive to manufacture, but also require additional assembly steps. So in this next video, we will have a look at how we can use 3D Sheet Metal Creator to simplify these two components and get them ready for manufacturing. On the 3D Experience platform, all applications are compatible with each other. With the seamless switch from X Design to Sheet Metal, the toolbars in our user interface update, so we can stay focused on the task at hand. We will start by isolating the components that we plan to replace and creating a new uh, replacement component. We can start a new sketch on the top face of the existing base. Copying the footprint from the original base will also give us a head start on the redesign. Some of these holes are no longer necessary, so they will be removed. X sheet metal includes advanced context recognition, which means we'll have quick access to the tools we want, keeping our mouse cursor focused on the model. While getting started, we are conveniently prompted to provide some overall sheet metal parameters to be used as default values, saving time on downstream features. We can now hide the original base plate as we have captured all we need for this first feature. To enhance this design, we can bend this front edge upward so the base can smoothly glide over workpieces. The position of the bend is precisely defined by a sketched line and can be set to any angle you prefer. Not all sheet metal features require a sketch. In this case, we can select all the outer edges of the base to add some short, short walls. There are multiple alignment options to perfectly position the added materials, such as measurement criteria and material side. To confirm the, that the corners were trimmed per the default parameters, the current design can be flattened at any time. Next, we will need to supply this design to the cutting machine using the industry standard DXF format. This will include the cutting profile, bend lines, and user stamps. Saving it to the 3D drive allows us to share the file with anyone so they can view it and add markups using the 3D player. Additionally, these markups can also be shared to a community to notify key project stakeholders and discuss further changes. When you use the right tool, you can get your job, job done faster at a higher quality. The 3D sheet metal creator role on the 3D experience platform provides a purpose-built environment that'll have your designs ready for manufacturing in no time. So as you can see, SolidWorks cloud design apps introduce new capabilities with every release that provides more mobility without sacrificing the powerful design tools that you know and love. All of this functionality extends to you to design on your own time, wherever you are on any design. So that's with a look at uh, some of the cloud-based design apps. Now let's have a look at the collaboration tools within 3D Experience and how we can use it to manage our SolidWorks data on the cloud. Storing and managing, uh, storing, managing and collaborating design data is a challenge every company faces. Uh, now with many more teams working remotely, there are questions on everyone's mind. How can we securely centralize our data to improve collaboration and, de and design at the same time while maintaining our design tool of choice within the SOLIDWORKS? So let's go see a little demonstration on what it looks like to store and manage cloud data with SOLIDWORKS and Inovia. So I will be using three of our um, team members, which is Arpit, who's going to be the engineering manager, me, who's going to be the engineer, and Marlon, who's going to be the designer um, on, in this story. So we'll start by begin by dropping in on Sajid, which is me, the engineer. And uh, 
as he starts his day working in SOLIDWORKS desktop. So Sajit receives a notification from his manager, Arpit, where, where he sees the discussion thread involving a new design request. He's being, uh, um, he's being asked to add rollers to an existing assembly. He initiates a search for the related CAD model and drags it into his SOLIDWORKS session. It's just that simple to access his SOLIDWORKS data that's so securely stored in the 3D experience platform. He then reserves this assembly to give himself right access. So now he's made his design changes, but before saving back to the cloud, he wants to know where this assembly is being used. The relations app gives him a graphical view of all the child, um, of all the parent child dependencies. He finds the top level assembly and opens it right into his session. He sees the familiar options to open the model resolve, lightweight, or large design review mode. Choosing lightweight means SOLIDWORKS doesn't have to download every part contained in the assembly. That's a big time saver for the large models. With the top level assembly up to date, he reserves it and clicks save. He creates a new revision of the lid now that the rollers have been added. Despite this being a very large assembly, um, save, time, save time is efficient because only the models that have changed need to be saved to the cloud. Next, he loads the top assembly into the Product Structure Explorer. This app provides a graphical view and list view at the same time. He needs to locate the newly added roller assembly within the structure. Um, he can also arrange and filter the display anywhere he likes. He, um, after this, he'll open the side panel and attach a supporting document. In this case, a PDF with installation instructions for this new roller wheel set will be added. All right. So now it's time to give Arpit the manager an update on his progress. Instead of, instead of an email, phone call, or web meeting, Sajit tailors an interactive dashboard that will have exactly the information um, he wants Arpit to review. First, he adds a 3D play with a viewing app preloaded with the top level assembly. He also grabs a screenshot, he, which he can post back to the discussion thread. Next, he launches the Bookmarks app, which is a convenient way of organizing um, shortcuts to frequently used or favorite items. His manager, Albert, likes this because it keeps his most important data right at his fingertips. When he's ready to share the dashboard, he can just copy the link and share it. As a last step, Sajit opens up his 3D Swim app in a side panel so he can notify the engineering manager, Arpit. He adds a comment, pastes the link to the shared dashboard, and inserts a screenshot of this latest design. When you connect SOLIDWORKS with the 3D Experience platform, it's the best of both worlds, cloud and desktop. It gives you a fast and easy way to store, manage, and share design data with the convenience and security of the cloud. There's little to no setup required, so you can be productive right away. So let's move on to streamlining this collaboration now. Just bear with me, everyone. I think I've got a bit of a technical issue here.
Okay, I think we are back on. Sorry about that. So the 3D experience platform is much more than just saving SOLIDWORKS data to the cloud. For non-CAD users like Arpit, the engineering manager, the platform gives him a, a simple browser-based approach to managing his team more efficiently. So now let's see how he uses the 3D experience platform apps to streamline collaboration. Arpit opens his browser and sees Sajit has replied to his post. He's included a link that he can add to his existing dashboard. The 3D Play Viewing app and Bookmarks app are preloaded with the data Arpit needs to review his latest design. Fully interactive viewing of even large models is a breeze on any device, especially touch screens. There's no very, uh, special hardware required and no CAD licenses needed. Arpit uses a measure tool to verify the proper radius on the wheel roller assembly. But looking, at, looking closer at the roller arms, he wonders if there might be excessive twisting without some kind of support member between them. So he launches the issue 3D app to log a record of this issue. It's just one of many ways the team could use Inovia to track problem reports or change requests. He can then tag the related 3D models in the assembly. And verifies that the right people are assigned to this issue. Sajit will be automatic, automatically notified through the platform. There's no need for following up with an email or phone call. It's, it's a much more streamlined way to collaborate. Now he launches 3D markup. This app gives him extended tools to document the issue. He can create multiple views and add various annotations right on the 3D model. Um, the markup and all other relevant information added um, in this step are all self-contained within the issue and available to all stakeholders. While Sajid gets to work on this on the design issue, Arpit also has a job for Marlon, the designer. He uses the collaborative task app to assign Marlon with adding a hardware kit and creating a drawing for the wheel roller assembly. Just like with the issues app, collaborative tasks collect all the communications, assignees, and 3D model data in one spot, and also displays the progress of all his tasks in a single dashboard tab giving ARPIT an overview of everything on his radar. The 3D experience platform helps streamline collaboration all from a browser on any device with no software to install. The intuitive apps eliminated dozen, eliminate dozens of other disconnected solutions, improving productivity and providing clearer focus for everyone involved. So we've seen all the good stuff. So let's have a look at how we can solve any of these design challenges together. All right, so, so in, in our last video, the customer needs a quick response. So Arpit's design team will need to work on this same SOLIDWORKS model at the same time. Not having the proper write access, accidentally overriding some, someone else's work. Uh, these things happen all the time with traditional file-based management. And it's, a, at, and it's even harder when people are working remotely. So let's see how the 3D experience platform enables a more seamless, error-free approach to concurrent design. So first, let's check in on Marlon. He has the collaborative, ta uh, collaborative task app running inside his SOLIDWORKS task pane. He sees the task that has been assigned to him and drags it to in progress. The related CAD model is um, also already attached. He just needs to open it into his session. All of Marlon's changes occur at the assembly level. So he only needs to reserve the top level for write access. So he only, um, he's added the fastener kits and saves to the cloud. So any other users will be able to see his latest updates. Next, he, la he lays out a 2D drawing with the bill of materials that Arbit will need to show the customer. 
Meanwhile, Sajid gets to work on the stability issue. The issue management app keeps track of his progress and carries along all the information he needs to get to work. He starts by opening the attached 3D marker. He sees Arpit's notes and clicks through the 3D geometry to find the affected subassembly. Although Arpit attached the roller assembly, uh, Sajid needs to reference its parent assembly as well. So he locates it through the relations app and then attaches this assembly to this issue. From here, he can open it directly in, into his SOLIDWORKS session. But this is where it gets interesting because this is the same assembly uh, Marlon is already working on, but that's okay. He only needs right access to the real roller assembly itself. The top assembly is just for visual reference. He researches what he needs and gets to work adding a stabilizing member. When he tries to save the assembly, he sees that there are other subcomponents that also need saved that, did, that he didn't reserve. On the fly, the software gives right access to those additional files without causing an interruption to his workflow. The save is complete. And now this assembly is up to date and safely uploaded to the cloud. Problem solved. So he moves the issue status to in approval for ARPIT to review. Since Marlon is still working on the assembly, Sajid needs to let him know that he's finished making some changes. So he uses the inbuilt conversations tool to send him an instant message. So after this, Marlon will get his notification in regards to this. Um, so he just needs to refresh the assembly to get the latest version from the server. And now he's up to date, including the drawing, which is also now re ready to be saved. To close the loop, he returns to his collaborative tasks and then attaches this new drawing, saves the, um, or actually leaves a comment to um, ARPIT and moves the task to complete it, all without leaving his SOLIDWORKS design session. Now back to Arbit. First, he checks on the issue he assigned to Sajid. His original 3D markup automatically shows the latest design changes. Everything looks good, so he marks the issue as completed. Issue management on the 3D experience platform is a great way to log, it, log the history of problem reports and change requests. Now to take a look at Marlon's work. Arpit switches to his bookmark app. There's a drawing. He drags it right into the 3D Play Weaver. It's exactly what he needs to show the concept to the customer. He marks the drawing as released so it can't be changed for the duration of the customer approval process. Arpit then posts a quick comment on his original discussion thread to congratulate the team on finishing the stage of this project. So now more than ever, companies are looking for ways to centralize and secure their SOLIDWORKS desktop data in the cloud. Teams can now design faster together with SOLIDWORKS and 3D experience while streamlining collaboration and enabling error-free concurrent design. So I'll conclude my uh, presentation now. So you'll be seeing more 3D experience works in the near future uh, of what we missed. In the meantime, enjoy SOLIDWORKS 2021. I'll hand over to Gabe now to go through with the rest of the presentation, enjoy the rest of the day and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for that, Sajith. Uh, it's a really great job. It's really exciting to see everything that's happening with the 3D experience. Uh, thanks for your effort. I know it's uh, tough down there in Melbourne, but uh, you're doing well, mate, and I'm glad to see you shaved the beard. Um, moving along, uh, we have uh, talked about MSI laptops. You have your laptop, you have your efficiency gains with a 3D connection space mouse. Now, let us help you get SolarWorks.
how can we help you save the cash flow? How can we make the purchasing process even easier? Well, I've got Brett and Marinas here to tell us more about that. Dave? So, uh, just this is a before I commence, I just want to quickly give you a demonstration um, in relation to procure it. Great. Alrighty. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Gabe and Steve, for having us here today. I really appreciate the, uh, the time to spend uh, with, with customers, whether it's virtual or whether it's face-to-face. -face. Uh, look, I guess when we, when we spoke to, to Gabriel and we're given the opportunity to come and speak about Procurit, uh, particularly on a topic um, that is close to our hard innovation, um, look, we, we jumped at the chance. Uh, just so you know a little bit about Procurit, um, we're, we're a fintech, we're an Australian fintech company. Um, we're, we're very new to market um, in terms of Oh, okay. so, so in terms of Procurit, the, uh, the, the business was really formed out of an innovative idea to improve the, the experience that, that businesses had um, in the marketplace when acquiring um, products. And, and products are pretty diverse products, so anything from hardware, software, and um, many even services. So uh, what we try to do is we try to make things um, as simple as possible for customers whenever they engage with suppliers for, for typically what, what are seen as either larger invoices or, um, or higher ticket items. Yep. Jumping on to the... Uh, yeah. This is a demonstration of using Procurit to pay for your CAD Space software. First, enter your CAD Space invoice data. Choose the number of payments you would like to make and provide some contact details. Next, we ask that you provide details of a driver's license. This allows Procurit to verify your identity. Then, let us know about your business. Procurit uses this information to perform an automated credit assessment of your business. Finally, enter a payment method. You can pay by credit or debit card or via direct debit from a bank account. From here, your monthly payments will be made automatically. Great. Thank you for, uh, for giving us the opportunity to, to share the demonstration. So, so just to jump out of Procure for a moment and, and really to talk about why we are here today, uh, and, and that's really to talk a little bit more about innovation in general, um, I'll, I'll discuss Procurit a little further down the track just in terms of how Procurit has come into the scope of um, the innovation piece, more around the buying experience for customers. Uh, but before we go into that, I, I do want to touch on um, the, the theme of innovation. And we've seen this kind of develop over the last uh, 12 months, really accelerate over the last 12 months more than anything else, although it always has been in the background. Um, and the way, the way we look at innovation is that it's, it's really driven by a combination of forces that you know we've seen in, in in the commercial finance space, but also we're seeing a lot more with our clients in their businesses. So the the, the, the four main forces, we'll call them five, that, that we see driving innovation in uh, in the business to business space, are really driven out of out of necessity. So um, the main one here is is you know, the, the the saying necessity is the mother of invention. Really, what we've seen um, in the last sort of ten months is the need to really think about different ways that our customers go to market, not just from a virtual engagement perspective, but also just in terms of speed and how to do things uh, with less in the context of lower budgets, um, and also just also getting access to other um, items of technology, software that, that does really help scale up their business. They no longer have the, I guess, the luxury necessarily of, of operating the way they used to operate um, prior to sort of the last 10 months. Uh, the other key factor, which is always in, in the background and, and is a thing that tends to drive 
a lot of the um, the recent developments in, in consumer um, engagement uh, in particular is convenience. So um, for, for a lot of people, you know, that many, of, many people have taken for granted how they've engaged with, you know, the, 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 where they go out to, to, to buy something, um, in, whether it's in a retail environment or, um, or whether it's, you know, they go and order food. Effectively, that has all been turned on its head. Um, the online piece is now, you know, prevalent everywhere. The people are, they never used to use Uber for, for, for deli food delivery, uh, uh, are now using it to, to have food delivered to their homes. Um, people are downloading um, menu log apps at a, at a rate of knots. People are using Amazon and they're using eBay as pretty much like their, their, their online store. So things have really developed in that space, particularly in the, in the consumer space. Now, there's, there's a whole bunch of themes that we see um, in, in the business to business space where, where that, is, that is becoming a little bit more prevalent. It, it may not necessarily look and feel exactly like the consumer experience, but, but we feel that definitely that, that whole consumerized approach to um, having access to a service, whether it's software as a service or product as a service, is really coming into play right now in the business. The other um, key force that we've seen is, is productivity play. So um, a lot of this has got to do with um, ha having access to, to you know, software packages like SolidWorks, but then in, just in general, the, the, the hygiene factors around you know, how do I run my business, um, how do I become a little bit more productive in terms of you know, getting access to, 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 my, to my debtors um, so I can make real-time decisions around who to call. Um, how do I invoice my customers seamlessly so that you know, I don't have to spend half the day putting together invoices. Um, we're seeing a lot more improvement in that space and there's been a raft of accounting software packages that have come onto the market to, to, to help in that regard. The other key point is scale and profitability. So, you know, um, a lot of us don't have the luxury of um, operating um, in, at a loss, you know, for, for a long period of time. You know, some companies on, on, on the stock market that do that and they seem to be able to manage okay. But in all reality, because the, the majority of our customers are small businesses, you know, at the end of the day, you have to make a, a, a profit at the bottom line to, to help continue to run your business. So a lot of the um, innovation that we've seen in market has really um, led to scale benefits. So previously, you, need to, you used to have to have a sales office um, in another location. Uh, now you can you can establish a sales office. We had a client the other day setting up a, a sales office in New Zealand, yet you know, they haven't put anyone on the ground there. So, and, and even our business, uh, we're in, in in December, we're in we remarked to, to set up an office in New Zealand. So there are all these additional benefits that come with you know technology um, in, in a lot of ways, but also just the ability to to, to establish uh, a legal presence outside of your current environment. Um, that, that makes it easier to, 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 to scale up uh, nationally and, and even internationally. Um, so so they're, the f they're the five main forces that we focus on when we think about innovation. How that really impacts customers at the ground level, it, it really does affect the way um, they, they work. And, and, and when I say work, I, I mean that in a general sense. So that, that is either providing a service for their customers or, or producing or manufacturing a manufacturing a particular asset or widget to, to, to sell to their clients. Um, how we learn is important as well. Um, it used to be a case of, you know, a lot of the, the teaching was done in a tertiary environment, um, and then also look at in, in an in office or an in a face to face environment. I think that'll that'll slightly change a little bit, but you know, it's not going to be a definite. But more more and more people are having access to to dif different digital forms of education, um, and how we earn is is the other key component or pillar around how innovation is changing. Um, the business to business environment. So it used to be a case of, you know, having a website was sufficient or having a, a, um, a posting in the, in, the, in the local paper or yellow pages was sufficient to draw foot traffic or uh, customer interest. Now things are changing. You know, there is a case of now that you, you need to be on, on social to some degree to get your brand out there. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that further. And then finally, how to buy. And I guess this is where Procure uh, really comes into play. Um, it used to be a case of, you know, the, the whole procurement process, um, you know, had a, had a decision point at the various stages. First of all, it was the, 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 the product and then it was the, the budget piece and then finally it was like the cash management piece. Um, we feel that that whole cycle is now really shortened down a lot given that um, decisions can now be made digitally um, and in particular with a procurement offering, um, uh, the actual finance and cash process can happen all in one hit in under, under a couple of minutes as you saw earlier. 
But just quickly to, to drill down on how, on how to work, just to give you a sense for the changes we've seen, obviously the, the obvious ones are the remote working, the mobile working. Um, the digital tools is really important. Um, we had one of the guys earlier talking about the MSI product. Um, you know, hardware, software, that is all integrating a lot more with just the way people are engaging with customers on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's all about just some time. Software is becoming a bigger component of, of any of any sale that we're seeing in, in the business in the business space. So, um, and, and software enhancements are becoming more and more regular. Uh, the key the key um, driver of this is obviously automation. So, where there is an opportunity to remove, um, I guess you call it downtime or or waste. Um, we're seeing a lot of our customers um, employ mechanisms where there's integration between two types of technologies. Um, the how we work, you know, th there has been a lot more of a prevalence of, of freelance and, and consultancy style arrangements in market. Um, you know, yes, you still have, you know, your um, your different business models where people are working in organisation, but we're also seeing a lot more flexibility in the workforce where, um, you know, there's outsourced freelancers. Some some of it could be outsourced internationally, but there is still that, that movement towards quality for the in-house um, or at least the in, 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 intranational um, perspective and having people that you know you can speak to over, over a video call and they understand exactly what you're after. Um, so so that's, that, they're the changes or the trends we're seeing. In terms of how, how we learn, um, look, a big part of that has gone to, to forums. Um, you know, there, there is obviously the, the, the supply-driven forums that are where you get your, your strong technical um, training and expertise, but then there are the, the, the forums like the LinkedIn forums or the even some, some Facebook forums where you get more around the market sense around what things what things are changing, you know, a, a styles of a delivery changing. Um, and on that note, you know, even the way people are engaging, you know, videos are now becoming quite prevalent in the way um, customers deliver a product or whether it's training or whether it's even just look, this is a problem I had and this is how I solved it. So we're finding that videos has become a really strong part of the way that they engage in with their customers. Um, just to jump on the how to earn, so yeah, referrals is always a really good source, a really co low cost source of acquiring customers. But as, as I touched on earlier, now the, the, the fact that we're out, you know, digitally, the market is huge out there. So there's, there's no longer that constraint necessarily around having to operate within a, a certain jurisdiction or a certain um, country necessarily, or even like a certain state. Um, there's the ability to have a web presence, whether that's you know through a through a LinkedIn page, uh, a Facebook page, and also being able to um, to get feedback from your clients is a little bit more tangible. So clients are more prepared to to to, to provide a, a testimonial, whether that's in, in in written form or video form, if they feel that they've gotten some really good service. Um, Final point is around digital tender. We're seeing, and also just digital um, engagement, which I'll talk, we'll talk around on, on the buy side. But digital tenders are becoming more frequent. Every every tender process is now done online. You know, there's obviously a, a whole process around the procurement um, piece on that. To, so just to now jump on the how to buy piece of the um, the equation. So the the big change that we've seen is that you know in business to business, it's, things are still done. On, on the fact that you know someone wants to know who the other person is, there is a handshake approach, but a lot of the research around where people go before they buy is, is now done online. Um, I believe yeah, close to 86% of the research is done online. Um, more and more we're seeing that research step now moving into the transactional step, and, um, and that is really based on just an ease of implementation, um, the fact that they're able to be presented with different payment options online. Um, and even before that, you know, in terms of the, 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 the scope around the, the trade show approach to selling, I think with the recent changes with COVID, um, it's really uh, forced some people to, to really look at their business models and potentially engage with um, their, their customers in a different way. So we're seeing a prevalence of trade shows pop up uh, that, that are digital. This is one prime example in a lot of ways, but, um, but across um, all of Australia, I'm finding that a lot more people are now getting back on the, on the, on the trade show. Uh, path, but but they, they tend to be digitally based, um, and finally digital payments. Everything is now moving towards real time. Um, the the old the old approach of you know going through a finance process and 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 paying at the end of the month. Some of that is still out there, but, but the more and more these payment options are procured in market, uh, the 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 more that we can see an improvement cash flow benefit for customers.
All right, so in terms of Procure it, so I'll quickly just jump back on Procure it. Um, so we are, we are a relatively new business, but we, we, we come from a background of, of, of 50 years of experience in, in commercial lending and, and technology. Uh, so we're in a, we, we could, we'll term ourselves an Australian fintech. Um, you know, we, we're homegrown. Our platform has been engineered from, from the ground up. Um, it isn't a, a bolt-on of, of third-party applications. It, it is our, our source code. Um, you know, we have been around two years. We, uh, we launched in market and, and you know, we've, we've established some really good traction in the professional services space where, it, where, where that is our focus. We really want to understand the, uh, the, the problems that, you know, customers have and, and with the aim of obviously using technology to solve those. Um, one, one of the big uh, problems that I guess we came across was, was the pain points associated with, with the buying experience. And so um, a lot of the technology, as you saw, is based on how do we achieve the, the right outcome with, with using as, as little information as possible, but also meeting regulatory requirements. So I'll talk to that in a little bit further. Um, in terms of how we would go to market, our approach is really to partner with um, you know, reputable organisations. Um, CAD Space is obviously on, on, on the top of the list there in terms of we've, we've been discussing um, Procure It with them for a bit of time and you know we recently established a relationship and we've had some really good runs on the board so um so it's good to, to be able to put a face to, to to the guys here in sydney um and as i mentioned earlier we, our plans are although we're a national company now our plans are to move to new zealand in, in the latter part of this calendar year so just to jump on the actual customer problems that we came across and, and how procure it came to being uh we found that there were some significant gaps in the market um, for, for businesses when, when they're looking to acquire something, either because it wasn't budgeted or you know they needed to draw down on, on, on a credit facility, whether it was a credit card, an overdraft, or even they, they, they needed to seek some, some third party asset finance. And the process around obtaining those solutions tends to um, either take a few days, sometimes it takes weeks. And the other big, the big challenge for customers is that it just means that they're eating into the cash that they could have redeployed either to run their business, you know, increase marketing or even just you know expand um, in, into uh, into another territory so we find that our solution tends to provide that just-in-time capital when they need it and it's very discreet it is it is discreet to, to, to the purchase that they're making um, we also found that um, what was in market was very painful like in terms of the the, the, the way to go process so um, our, our process is entirely online um, look there is eligibility criteria but you know Right now, nine and a half out of ten uh, customers are, are complying with the terms, um, and the, the the biggest opportunity we found is that um, it, it's almost like a win-win solution because a the the supplier has a happy customer at the end of the process. You know their invoice is obviously paid, um, and the customer receives the benefit of a cash flow friendly uh, alternative of payment, which uh, which is what we found. Um, so I've, I've covered off a lot of the cash flow or the, or the problems that, that we've solved with Procure it. The other key points to note is that it is limited to the discrete um, transaction, so there is no property security as such. Um, you know, the, the, when we set up the payment options with the supplier, um, it's, it's really aligned to the, the, the term of the, uh, the, the, the product. So um, you'll notice that um, if you've engaged with, with CadSpace and Procure it, um, you know, there are multiple options that you can choose. You can choose three, six, 12 months. Um, and the other thing is that the, the key takeaway is that um, once you've paid it, it's fine. you can use it for, for another, um, another purchase that you might have, whether it's a, a piece of hardware. And, and we do encourage our customers to contact us about anything else that they might require. Um, I've touched on these are really the high level points around Procure. So because it is completely online, there are some parameters that we've set. So typically, um, the, the minimum invoice we have is $500, but it can be used for transactions up to $50,000. It is, it is embedded into the, into the sales process or payment process. So you'll notice if you receive the CAD space invoice that, that there is the, the option to, to pay an installment. You click through that and it'll take you through to the procured experience. Um, you know, you start your plan, you receive your terms and conditions. It all, it all is very transparent. Um, you can choose your, your term options. Here um, we've gone up to 12 months. So it's three, six and 12 months with CAD space. Um, and it is really done in, in, in in a couple of minutes, depending on how quickly you can type and I guess how good your internet is. So in terms of the team, um, in Australia, we're, we're actually in growth phase at the moment. So 
Um, I've got Stefan is, is in the office here with, with us in Sydney. He's, a, he's our product officer. We've got our chief uh, tech officer. He's also Australian based. Hugh, um, you know, the, the guy's a genius. He's a, he's a software engineer, full stack developer. And we've got the, uh, the originations team um, with beginning with James and we've got a few more um, who are joining us. But underneath, underneath that, we've got a fully fledged uh, finance and treasury function. Um, you know, we, we're engaged in, in, in marketing efforts and we do have our customer success team who are to handle customer um, care. So that's it for me. Thank you very much, Britna. Thanks. It's always nice to have um, guests in our office. It hasn't happened for the last six to nine months, so it's, it's really good to have a partner come and visit us today. Look, I hope you picked up something from that. I, we've actually had quite a number of customers take us up on that offer. Uh, it's been a really experience for them and they got their solid work, they got their MSI laptops and they got their 3D connection space mouse, so all winning. Uh, but now we've come to the part that I know a lot of you have signed up for, but uh, yeah, we, we got there at the end. Uh, this is a little cheeky part that I wanted to talk about first. Uh, we wanted to really try and test the eye for detail for some of our designers, uh, for some of our engineers, our customers that use SolarWorks. So in our promo video, at around the 8 second mark, there was just a microsecond, a, a little cheeky link uh, to our website, to an Easter egg. And it was a very, it's kind of a simple, we left it a little bit ambiguous, so it wasn't just straightforward. We will actually do, do a blog uh, in the next couple of weeks to show you how it was calculated so you get an idea and see what you missed out. But the one key thing that I will say is that we wanted to keep this open to all our customers, whether they're using standard, professional or premium. So one of the things is that you needed to use Simulation Express and therefore it meant there was no gravity used. Uh, but to give you an answer, uh, we were, the correct answer we were looking for is 62.59 millimeter deflection. And actually we had quite a number of entries and uh, none of them were exact, so we did go for the closest answer. And the winner is uh, Ben Abbotton from WebSecare who gave submitted in the closest answer of 65.7. He actually included quite a lot of details, quite, uh, two options, the one with gravity, the one without gravity. And he even resolved the, the binary code. So thanks, Ben. You will receive a 3D connection space mouse from us uh, in the next couple of weeks. Well done, mate. Uh, now, we're going to go through our number one fan prize. So uh, Supply and 3D Connection have uh, proudly given us a, a space mouse enterprise that we can give to our number one fan prize. Now, I really love this prize because it actually really shows us that uh, our customers love working with CatSpace, they love SolarWorks, and they've registered the most amount of people to attend the event today. And um, before I re reveal the winner, I did want to point out that the QR, code, the QR code down the bottom is the same link that uh, was said in the 3D Connection uh, presentation. So I'll leave it up here for a little bit longer. Make sure you scan that, sign up, because there's another chance for you to win the 3D Connection Space Mouse Enterprise Kit. So without further ado, the winner for our number one fan actually goes to ARCC, Aluminium Revolutionary Chassis Company. Uh, congratulations, guys. Thanks for your loyal support. Thanks for uh, registering, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. And you know, you got a Space Mouse Enterprise coming your way. I'm not sure who gets it. You have to fight amongst yourselves, but at least there'll be one to share with the team. So well done, and thanks again. Now for the major prize, the one we've all been waiting for. Um, got an MSI WF65 10TH workstation. So this is the MSI workstation that we use for some of our tech guys. A lot of our customers are using it. It's got all the right specification, all the bells and whistles to make sure that you can go on and work really well with SolidWorks. Now, win this prize. You're watching, you've registered, you got a ticket in there. We also encourage you to refer some friends and get them to jump onto the event as well. And for every friend that you referred, you actually get an extra ticket. So we try to make it fair. We've copied everyone, put all the names in there, and we've actually put it onto a, a lottery website so you guys can actually see it while we're drawing it live. So what I'll do is I'll flick it over to my tech guy over here and uh, we'll uh, show you what we've got. Congratulations, Majid Jamili. So uh, we'll get your contact details. We'll be uh, contacting you shortly to send that uh, laptop off your way. I hope you really enjoy it. 
Um, and just to really close off today, we just wanted to thank all our partners. We wanted to thank MSI for being with us all these years, 3D Connection and Supplier, and also Procure It, who came into the office. And of course, our partnership with SolarWorks, obviously going strong as ever. And just to really close off what we've covered today, we've seen some of the expanded functionality, a lot of that time spent on developing the uh, and improving the performance and the stability of SolarWorks and how it combines and, and we can use the cloud collaboration that is 3D experience. Now keep an eye out for future webinars and blog posts for all the points that we couldn't cover. There was just too many. Uh, you've got to see some of our favorites. Um, we'll be sharing a bit more of that in the future. And then just once more, just our product suite and our contact information. Please send us through your emails, all the questions that you have. Hopefully we've answered some of those on the, con uh, the chat box that we had, but please send us through. Give me a call. I'm happy to have a chat with anyone. And thanks again for joining us today.